I wanted to bring one quick story um, while I, I was on the website Unsolved Appalachia and this story came up. I've read about this lady before but I decided I would make a quick video about her. She's known as the Moorhead Bridge Lady but in life little was known about the person behind the alias used by the Bridge Lady. She seemed to be partial to using Samika but was also known to use Cecilia No More, Grace, Asia, and Denise from time to time. She arrived in Moorhead, Kentucky sometime in either 2009 or 2010 and soon became a fixture. People would often see her walking with purpose along US 60, clothed in all black. She chose the Triple Creek Bridge to serve as her home. Local residents offered her food and assistance. Sometimes they would offer her a place to stay, but she would decline. However, she would often seek help from local food banks and the Christian Social Services. She was known to be very proud and independent. She was very intelligent, polite, and reportedly showed charity whenever she had the means to do so. She was also very private and didn't allow anyone to get very close to her. Um, on December the 15th, 2018, she was found dead beneath the bridge she sheltered under from apparent natural causes. Now, I'm going to see she had died from apparent natural causes. Who was the Moorhead Bridge Lady? I reached out to the local coroner of Rowan County, Kentucky in hopes of being able to assist with getting genetic testing done, but I haven't heard back. Now this was posted, let me go back and see. This was April the 2nd, 2022. So this is pretty recent. The woman died in 2018 and they still haven't identified her. Um, Okay, so this person reached out to Round County Corner and they haven't returned their call back. She did guard her identity, but I do truly believe that no one should be forgotten. And if she does have family somewhere, they should know what happened to her. If you recognize Samika Sicily No More, which is what she went by, please contact the Moorhead Police Department. Um, let's see. I mean, I'm going to show another picture of her. Well, she was estimated to be around 60 years of age. She was 5 foot tall and weighed about 114 pounds. Her eyes were brown and she had graying hair that she kept in two 6 inch braids. Several causes, so she probably, let me go back and see what year, what month it was, December. It could have been cold weather, but I don't know if that was what it was or if she was sick. Um, and that's pretty much all there is on her on this website. On Name Us, she is um, an unidentified person. Um, she is African American. Five foot tall, around 110 to 115 pounds. Um, she was found dead of uh, a homeless woman who lived in the community 10 years, found underneath the Triple Creek, Triplet Creek Bridge. She was known to sleep under this bridge and used the name Sicily, Cicelia, S I S C E L I A, no more. When arrested by Moorhead Police Department in 2010, she gave the alias Samika. She told others that her name was Denise. So jump ahead to Reddit. This was posted three years ago on the Unresolved Mysteries. What happened to Moorhead, Kentucky's bridge lady? A lady affectionately known in the small college town of Moorhead, Kentucky as Bridge Lady passed away December 15, 2018 with her true identity remaining unknown. 
the Jane Doe gave various names when people asked who she was. She was found dead underneath the Tripl Triplet Creek Bridge on Christie Creek Road, with the cause of death being listed as COPD. Once when she once when taken into custody due to wet, dangerous weather conditions for her own protection, she gave the last name of No More. She was iconic in the Moorhead community. Samika, the most common name that would identify her, arrived in the area around 2009. What her life was prior to her arrival in Moorhead is a complete mystery. Samika seemed to choose a life of simplicity, rejecting offers of tents or indoor accommodations. She did sometimes seek services at the Christian Social Services and Food Bank. One time she reported to have donated a winning lottery ticket along with $5 to the organization of the Christian Social, Net Social Services. She was known for wearing all black. Um, she was known for being very intelligent and polite. She enjoyed reading books. She reported she did not like word searches, but enjoyed crossword puzzles. Um, she would not divulge any personal information about herself. Two pages of her journal were included on one of her missing persons posters that I found with neat handwriting. She chronicled what she had eaten. There are journal entries that appear to have some sort, sort of numeric code shared as well as a page where she seems to get into some sort of argument with herself. She would often find cigarette butts to smoke, but she was also prone to buy sweet cigars. When she died, the community rallied to provide her with a proper funeral. Over 300 people contributed to a GoFundMe. There was some backlash to the community for this, but some members of the public were critical for no one helping her when she was alive. However, this does not seem to be accurate. It seems as though she refused help from the community, living the life the way she wanted. She was estimated to be around 60 years old. It would be hard to determine her true age, being that she never divulged anything about herself. Whatever her life was before she came to the Moorhead community is unknown. From what I can gather, there are very few leads, and so far, no missing persons reported have met her, um, have been a match to her. I don't know at the time if there was, when she was arrested, basically her arrest was just for her own protection due to the fact that she would not come in out of the cold weather. I don't know if they did any kind of DNA test, you know, took blood or any DNA swabs at that time. When she died, if they took DNA, and maybe they entered it into CODIS or one of these genealogy sites, maybe one day they will find out who she was. Um... There's some comments, but it's mostly just about, you know, her story is very interesting. She lived life on her own terms. Um, they believe the cause of death. Now, a lot of people in the comments are saying that the cause of death they believe to have been uh, related to COPD because she was a heavy smoker, or at least they always saw her buying cigarettes when she did have money. office would yield anything. Um, here is, she was adamant to remain anonymous and uh, maybe was not in the system, but it's possible that she might have been in the system. Maybe she had walked away from a life uh, after she had maybe had been released from jail at some point. 
and maybe she's in the system somewhere so I don't know um, some people suggest that maybe they might compare her to records of people who have been hospitalized in mental hospitals due to the fact that a lot of times homeless people like this do get admitted for their own good or at least you know that's the reason that they're told that they're admitted I don't know um, a few medical health professionals have suggested what I just said that they might check um, facilities because she may have been released from a mental health facility um, hopefully hopefully her DNA was kept now this one is a comment from someone who lives in Moorhead I'm from Moorhead and I saw her often walking around town lots of people offered her things but she would only accept from a couple of people I have heard two stories about how she got here one was that she came here following Hurricane Katrina that's a good possibility a lot of people were relocated and maybe that's something that people might want to look into and because it was around the time 2009-2010 um, other people say the rumor is that at one time she had been a doctor I don't know <laughs> I mean you would think that that you know would be something that people might have looked into I don't know here is someone else from Moorhead I'm late to the party but I was searching Kentucky cases to read and I think a lot of people look at her as a sad case but I think that she had exactly the life that she wanted I'm very thankful that her cause of death that her cause of death was a health issue and not something sinister uh, I never got the pleasure of meeting her but I did see her walking around town on many occasions that's pretty much all there is on reddit and so basically they you know hopefully they did put her um, into a gene her her DNA was put into a genealogy or one of these um, here is a story on WYMT this was posted January the 8th 2019 the highway 32 bridge in Moorhead gives gets folks out in the county to the city bypass but for one woman the bridge meant a little bit more it was her shelter um, the Moorhead community met Tuesday to say goodbye to a woman that many recognized the only catch is that no one really knew who she was she stayed under a bridge here in town and everyone knew that she would stay under one or two bridges for shelter so everyone just started calling her the bridge lady she was found dead December of 2018 um, it just basically goes on to say that she was known not to accept any kind of handouts and that when she needed help she would go seek the help out at the food banks or at some church or Christian social services but that she would often turn down help if someone offered it to her many people in the area called her Asia 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 she was a really good friend said Moorhead residents Betsy McKinney um, she loved to read and do crossword puzzles but in December it did not go unnoticed when she was not seen walking around as usual a concerned call led deputies to the bridge um, where they found her dead um, 
I thought about her as if she was a family member and a member of the community. We started a GoFundMe, and our goal was to raise $5,000, and we ended up raising over $7,500 for her burial. Dozens gathered at the bridge as a memorial to her. And that's pretty much it. And they just don't know who she was before she ended up in Moorhead. And that's uh, pretty much where the story is left. Four years have passed since she died. Hopefully her DNA was saved and put into these, um, you know, some of these uh, CODIS and some of these other. If she had ever been arrested, other than the time she was arrested in Moorhead, they may have kept DNA. I don't know. It's according to what her arrest was for. She may not ever have ever been arrested. Like someone suggested, maybe she had been a doctor. Maybe she had just had some type of mental health break. She didn't seem to be what people would categorize as like a crazy person, you know. They didn't say that she was like, but maybe she suffered from some schizophrenia or some bipolar disorder. Maybe she wasn't being treated for that. I don't know what led her to here, to Moorhead. I don't know what led her to um, live on the streets or to live under a bridge. And I think that during the winter months and periods of inclement weather, weather, such as flooding, people would go to check on her to make sure that she was safe. That could have been the reason why she was arrested, because the weather was so bad and people were calling with so much worry about her that the police just took her into custody for her own safety. And that is pretty much where the story ends. A celebration of her life was held January the 8th, 2019 at North Cut and Sun Funeral Home. Um, she was interred in the Forest Lawn Memorial Gardens in a small, um, you know, memorial was held for her. And that's pretty much it. So, um, those few pictures that I shared on the video are all that's, you know, there may be other pictures, other people who lived in the area may have other pictures of her, and maybe somebody out there knows who she was. Maybe someday somebody will be able to name her. Thanks for listening.